Good afternoon, this is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. Today is Tuesday, Wednesday rather, July 5th, 2006. The market's just closed, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we had happen today. The NASDAQ 100 Trust, symbol QQQQ on the screen, I've got a daily chart here, um, completely failed. And basically, when we look at that, it's broken below the level that we were hoping would hold as support, that prior important level near the 38.50, 38.70 level. Now it's looking like another failed move right in here. This trapped in a lot of buyers, similar to the way this trapped in a lot of buyers. And once that happened, you know, I think of the phrase every single time I see this happen, from failed moves come fast moves. Doesn't mean we're going to necessarily make lower lows, but anyone pretty much who bought the NASDAQ 100 stocks based on the Federal Reserve, is pretty much at a loss. And I say that because if we look at a four-day chart, which I have up on the screen right now, with the VWAP, this is the volume-weighted average price for the NASDAQ 100. That's this line right here. And we can see it jumped up when all we saw this volume come in. And then we had some pretty light volume on Friday. And then, of course, Friday or Monday's holiday shortened day, uh, was very light volume, but today the market actually gapped down and quickly ran through that level. Level. What this basically means is that the average transaction over the last four days has occurred up at this level at about 38.50, meaning that the average purchase is in a losing position. The average sword sale is in a winning position. So that this just is a shift in psychology that once again the people that bought based on you know, it's different this time. The, the Bernanke said uh, whatever he said was your reason for justification. The fact remained that the market is in a downtrend. And it, as long as this 50-day moving average is declining, you have to consider all rally suspect. And we look at the market as guilty till proven innocent. And it's so far below this 200-day moving average right up here as well at 48, 40 and a half that it just looks like really bad news. Now, the market came down below that 38.50 level. It broke that 38.70 level that I had mentioned that we, you know, we wanted to get very defensive. Uh, if it broke below that, that's the low of the last two days, or at last day and a half, rather. And then it came down to where? Right to this five-day moving average that's been so important. A failure here is really going to push this market back down towards the lows and possibly even lower lows. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. The S&Ps held up much better. Again, though, the declining 50-day moving average tells us to be suspicious here. The, it's nice to see that the market's back above the 200-day moving average, and that held as support intraday today. This market is holding up much better than the NASDAQ 100, obvious to see. Now, why would that be? Well, if you take a look at the oil sector, I think that has a lot to do with it. Oil had a big day today. Um, if we just look at USO, the uh, ETF for the oil, we can see that this oil has been in a very big uptrend here over the last week and a half, two weeks. And as the, as the price of oil has gone from $66 a barrel up to close to $71 a barrel. So oil continues to to find buyers in there it's broken this downtrend it's made a higher high so i think the oil's probably got support near seventy dollars a barrel it's got a uh, short term you know it's a little bit extended in here so maybe it comes down and tests seventy dollars a barrel i'm not an oil trader so that's all i'm really going to say about uh oil the iwm the russell 2000 also held up better than the NASDAQ 100. Still holds above this level of uh, prior resist, you know, support here that was resistance and the 200-day moving average down near uh, $70 a share. But again, be suspicious of the strength in these stocks because that 50-day moving average continues to be declining. And here again, we can see how much better it's held up than the NASDAQ. Let's go ahead and take a look at some individual stocks that I had mentioned in yesterday's video. Linux software, I'd said we wanted to wait for this stock to buy it under $4.10. It gave us a, a quick opportunity to do that in here. If we look at a, a two-minute chart, we can see that there was the opportunity to buy under $4.10. There were a couple times if you had been bidding below that 410 that you would have been filled. I think if you're in this stock right now, your stop goes underneath today's low, which is 406, so I'd put it 405 uh, for LNUX, giving you a total risk of about three cents a share. Stock still looks good on a daily, uh, and we're looking for a move up towards about that 50-day moving average at about 445. 
Uh, next, I had mentioned that we wanted to buy Mentor, symbol M-E-N-T, above $13.10. Obviously, that never happened. No reason to continue to watch it. The stock gap down. No reason to watch it. No reason to be involved. M-I-K-R, here's a stock that on the daily time frame, which said looks like it could continue to test these highs up near 1580. The stock came a penny away from that 1580. If you got involved here today, what I said that we were wanted to see was a move above this high from Friday afternoon at $14.40. As it moved above that, that's where we wanted to buy the stock, above 1444. So at 1445 right in here. <coughs> Excuse me, and then to put our stop below $14 a share. You can see it didn't break that $14 a share level. Continue to make these higher highs and higher lows today. So a very nice move, obviously, in this one. Better for you know, better than a dollar move in MIKR today. If you're still in the stock, it's reached its target. I would say that it can it can still continue to move higher, but I would use a stop somewhere down near $15.20 or so. Next up, we had uh, OTD we were going to look at to buy this one. I had accidentally said yesterday that this was fuel cells, but I, I listed the uh, ethanol plays. But it, it's an ethanol play, um, or at least alternative fuel. I said we wanted to buy it above $1.12. It didn't trade above $1.12. We were going to set our stop under here. So continue to watch OTD to see if it can get above that level. NGAS was a seasonal play that was showing some strength uh, Friday. And sure enough, a nice, real nice move um, right up to where, again, I was expecting it to move to. What I had suggested was a, a purchase between $8.05 to $8.07. We had that opportunity early on today. Suggested a stop near at $7.90. It did not breach that stop. So you should, st should have still been in the stock. And I had suggested a target of $8.60 to $8.70. We got that move here. If you're still in the stock, uh, I would suggest a stop maybe near 845 or so, but uh, real nice move in NGAS. Hopefully you guys got some of these big movers today. There was another one, and it's ironic that the NASDAQ was down so much, and these stocks are, are moving so big, but IFO. IFO, I had mentioned this is very similar to some other big movers of, of late, which are CENX, which had another good day today, and ERS, which also had another really good day today. Um, and IFO, I had suggested that we wanted to buy that above the five-day moving average, above uh, for this, this high over here at $6.12. I suggested it's very speculative to be careful with it. If you had, hopefully, you got involved in here above that $6.12 level, and it... Again, uh, the, the stop was suggested at $5.92. It did not reach that $5.02 level. Now we've had a nice move up, a rest, and then a, another push higher here today. If you're still in this stock, I would suggest a stop maybe near $6.75 or so. But a huge mover here percentage-wise. Awesome play. Hopefully you guys got some of that today. Um, on the short side, I was looking at SanDisk, SNDK, and wanted to short it below 5085. I didn't want to short it as a gap down though, so I'm not taking credit for this play. I did suggest though that the target would be 4850. It's attained that here on the close today, so um, I would be very careful with this one. If you are short it, I would suggest a stop. Worst case scenario up above here, but that's pretty pretty far away. That level would be 4933. So you'd be giving away almost a dollar on your stop. Um, maybe you know maybe even right above this level to make it a little more conservative 4875 or so but it has reached my target so I'm not going to continue to watch this one uh, over the next few days CRM salesforce.com I wanted to sort this one on a little move higher it never did that it gapped lower so I'm not going to update this one further um, maybe I will because it just looks very nice here on this daily chart let me take a look at it later and figure out what I want to do with this one uh, GYI Getty Images. Here's another stock that I had suggested that uh, we we couldn't we wanted to get it on a little bit of strength. Well, it wasn't really strong near the open, but if you'd opened it, you know, sold it near the open in here, it could have made for a really nice play. Again, I'm not going to take credit for it. If you're in the stock uh, short, I would say your stop goes above $63 a share. Pretty ironic that all the uh, longs work so well today on a, on a day when the uh, NASDAQ got hit so hard. My name is Brian Shannon. This is Alpha Trends Blogspot. If you're seeing this anywhere else on the web, be sure to take a look at my blog. Thanks for your time and have a great evening.